Hello. I have been rearranging my library and I found a lot of my art books kind of just piled in a corner and I haven't really looked through them in a while. And I watched a video on YouTube by a guy named Chroma Mama who was going through his favorite art books and it inspired me to get my art books out. These are not all of them, but some of the ones that I love the most. <laughs> You'll have to pardon me, my voice is still really raspy. I'm getting over COVID-19 and it has done a number on my lungs. <laughs> I'll just go through some of these books, just like a, a little flip through. <clears throat> some of them are just art books for concept art for games. Others are kind of primers for understanding a concept like color. And like I said, I have more, so if you like this, then I can do another video like this, um, whoever's watching. And I went through a period about a decade ago where I was buying every collector's edition, every game, and I've kind of gone through a lot of different collections and cannibalized my sets. <laughs> and then some of these I didn't get from anywhere special. I just got this one at a yard sale, for example. I just have a lot of really good information. See if I can keep the camera in focus. I'm not very good at this recording thing, but figured I might as well try. So, well, I'll just start with this one, I guess, since I have it out. How to draw comics the Marvel way. <laughs> Big names on there. This book, um, you know. I don't draw comics, although I do want to one day, but it can't hurt to learn from people who do this professionally. Talks about different tools that comic artists need, but you know, you don't have to be a comic book artist to use a kneaded eraser or a drawing board nibs and ink, like all of that is used throughout all different kinds of art. You get the terminology and everything, which is really nice. And then you just go to the basics, drawing shapes, turning shapes into other things, shading, perspective, that's a big one. A lot of this information is available on the internet, like draw a box tutorial, but there's something to be said about having a book in your hands and flipping pages. Eight and three quarters heads tall. Even though the art style is kind of classic, all of these things apply to modern art as well, and to the masters, <laughs> line of action, figures in motion, gesture drawing, big one. I don't know about you guys, but I just get inspired by looking at people's sketches. I love 
looking at sketchbooks and looking at art that hasn't been quite finished yet. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Joan and Jameson. And using a different camera angle. No, he really seems to be letting poor Petey have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fun. How to simplify things. Adding your darkest darks to emphasize mood. Look at that. Simplified. It still reads well. It's just... Good book to have. So that's that one. Then I have a concept art book here. The Witcher 3. One of my favorite games of all time. This one I'll have to kind of screen the pages before I turn to them because it has some not safe for work. <laughs> a nice map. And isn't that just inspiring for writers and fantasy writers in particular like just looking at how a map can give you a whole sense of a world <laughs> and these concept sketches I know a lot of concept artists do photo bashing but they draw over it to get it um, cohesive <clears throat> I just, uh, just gorgeous. But it also has some like early sketches if I can find them. Oh, yeah, see, I just skipped past a couple of naked butts. Look at that. Uh. Oh, nice. So there's some concept art and interiors and on this page you get the whole picture. I remember that quest. <laughs> it's just another book that just inspires me even though I don't do a lot of interiors or concept art in general. It's just seeing that the amount of work that artists do to get the final product to really nail down a person's character or, or their progression as they get new armor or upgrade <laughs> I just love it sketch after sketch we finally found a look for Geralt that spoke to us <laughs> yep Really, really cool to see the original art. <laughs> and these are, <coughs> excuse me, little flashback sequences that they have at the beginning of the chapters. Oh man, just look at this lighting. See, already I'm getting inspired for a new painting <laughs> just by flipping through a book. So, that's my Witcher book. Really good one. This um, Bioshock art book, I think, came with the Bioshock 2 um, collector's edition, which <clears throat> at one point they were selling really, really cheap. And I think they came with a, a record and um, a CD and everything as well, if I remember right. This is the same as uh, the Witcher one, but it goes a little bit more in detail with the concept art, I think. Like, for example, they're showing all these different sketches for 
items and signs and different things. Oh, I just love seeing these pencil sketches. And then what it looks like in game. This is such a simple piece. If you look at it, it's really down to the brush strokes on that, but it just immediately brings to mind the big sister character in that. And the splicers. Just, oh, the detail on it. Oh, it's just disgusting. <laughs> And scary. <laughs> this game is a very scary one. Oh, look at this. Wow. Goodness. I love the expressions. And then you can see the 3D models. character design and, and designing just the silhouettes of dresses and tuxedos. All of this just to set a really memorable mood. Deco... devolution? <laughs> That's a really cool book. And it makes me want to go and play Bioshock. Another one I have here, I'm trying to keep the reflections down, but this one is a really cool book. It's a little Zone of the Enders book. I got this at GameStop. I think it was like a dollar. <laughs> it has no barcode on it. I think it was just some promotional material or something and <laughs> I just scooped it up because, I mean, who doesn't like these mechs? <laughs> Now, I'm not, I'm not a big anime watcher, but I can definitely appreciate all the character design that went into this. I have to be careful because this one has a, quite a few nudes in it, surprisingly. Just see the brush strokes, they're so simple, but they all come together to create form and shape. movement just excellent work and this is this has some of my favorite pages just check some of these these out just enjoy as I flip through these ones I'll let the camera focus a little bit Is it lighting? Scale there. Another one up here. And each chapter they have a little splash scene. 
really inspiring even if you don't draw this style the artwork is so cinematic Like I said, I have to be a little careful turning these pages. Hmm. my cool Zone of the Enders book gold cover. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, again, I did a whole video on this one just flipping through it. And that one should still be on YouTube. But I had to give it an honorary mention here. Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn art book. I got this at Phoenix Comic Con in like, I don't know, 2014 or something. I just love to look through it. Just enjoy the aesthetic of the game and the art. Just love the composition here. And it even has um, notes at the bottom of the page here. Since as I drew this with extra room around the subject so that it could be trimmed and used in various ways. I like it best untrimmed though. Akihiko Yoshida. I just love the use of color in this one. It's peachy tones. <laughs> this one, I can't quite get into frame, but it says at the bottom here, Meteor, it's big, like it should be. <laughs> I, <laughs> I've already gone through this book in another video, so I should kind of speed it up here, but I just wanted to enjoy it a little bit. I'll just flip random pages. And Sid says his original design had a beard, but we decided to remove it in version 1.0 so he could show the passage of time when the realm was reborn. <laughs> I remember this armor set. Iconic. <laughs> So they have character design like this, all of the, well, not character design, but armor design like this, but it also goes into the seasonal, <laughs> which are just adorable. I loved all these little outfits. And then some weapons, items. This is like a treasure trove for cosplayers. Look at these grimoire. Yeah, 
And then I have a section for enemies. Instantly just goes right into some of the most iconic ones. Leviathan. Ugh. Oh my goodness. I just love seeing all these little sketches that they have. All these little mini ones here and what it's size comparison with PC. <laughs> so I'm very... I'm like, this is what they look like without their clothes on. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> and the Magitek. Oh. This, this stuff is like peak Final Fantasy for me. Oh, and I have to show this adorable, all these little, what are they called? Pets? Followers? And the little baby behemoth. <laughs> oh, it's just so cute. I just love this book. I could stare at this book for hours. Level design. <clears throat> Excuse me. Even down to the chairs. <laughs> Some of this environment piece and architecture. I'm just terrible with architecture, but they even have the writing and the symbols. Beast tribe marks. This thing is just comprehensive. <laughs> And these are, I think, just like promotional, yeah, promotional material for different events. I would love to have some of these, like this one. There's a poster in my house. <laughs> or this, look, look at this, oh, it's so classic. It says, I went for an in intentionally cheesy look for this one, reminiscent of a poster for a low-budget horror movie. <laughs> oh, I just, I just love it. I believe the artists on this game had so much fun. So. That is definitely one of my best purchases. <laughs> and it's really nice because you see how it's kind of scuffed up a little bit. Well, the dust jacket is exactly the same as the cover inside so if it ever gets really beyond repair the cover is still the same underneath which i thought was a really nice touch so that's a really good book if you can find that one and then lastly this is what i consider to be the bible of color theory <laughs> maybe i'm overhyping it but this book i recommend to every single artist um, James Gurney has a YouTube channel, and I watch every single video that he puts out. He does a lot of gouache and watercolor art, uh, like plein air, and his artwork starts out and it looks so messy, <laughs> and then he gets these incredible values and, well... This book has lots of different sections. I think like almost every page is a new section. And lots of um, things to read and other artists' work, not just James Gurney's. Famous pieces that show the concepts that he's discussing. And it is a treasure trove of information, inspiration,
This one is one that um, James Gurney painted. Isn't that so nostalgic? And he just brings things that are very ordinary and by painting them and giving them the treatment like this, it elevates it. And he also did um, Dinotopia, which is really, really fun mix of history and fantasy. <laughs> Lots of dinosaur paintings. And this has examples like these two colors are actually the same color. And he talks about why that is and the theory behind it and how the brain works. <laughs> He has lots of examples for each concept, different shadowing, coloring, and lighting. So he has this bust here of Abraham Lincoln, and it shows how the lighting looks when it's coming from directly in front, what the shadows will look like. Here's one from edge lighting, so you can see how it's just lighting the edges of protuberances. Reflected light that shows like here. And it's just like little things that you might not think of immediately, but the more you use these concepts, the more natural it feels. This is light fastness and really technical stuff here. Oh, I need to, I need to read this page, sky panels. I've been trying to learn how to drop skies. <laughs> and then this stuff is really, really interesting, designing your palette, um, coming up with a cohesive palette for a piece. These are monochromatic scenes. Color theory in a nutshell here. Blue shadow and amber light, and blue light creates an amber shadow. <laughs> it sounds so simple when you just see it broken down like that. Color triads, accents. This book is like worth its price and more, but you really only get out of it what you put into it. You can't, I don't think you can learn art without practicing and experimenting. <laughs> Look at this depth of field. Look, Look at this depth of field. It looks like he's jumping right out of the page there because it's all sharp right here. And then this is all kind of faded away, the edge treatment. Oh, subsurface scattering. I think when you see that glow on skin or in the ear. Yeah. So even if you're not a traditional artist, all of this still applies. Motion blur. And this is with oil paints. Very, very cool technique. Here's some about photo and observation. In plein air studies, you can observe and record nuances of color that completely elude the camera. All this warm. <laughs> I just love it. Lots and lots of information on this. Another book that I think if you can get your hands on it, 
read it cover to cover and then go back and read it again cover to cover <laughs> and then go through with with your post-it notes and post all your favorite pages <laughs> and anytime you you think of something that you want to work on in your art like for example my my I'm working on a piece with clouds right now now after this video I'm gonna go and read that page and try and apply it to my new painting <laughs> So, well, that's my little tour of my art books. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see more, I, I do plan on buying some more art books. So maybe I'll do another video sometime. But thank you.